Hi, it's Ms. Vital. This podcast is on controlling gene expression, is meant to correspond with Chapter 18 for AP Biology. Bacteria can control their metabolism by switching genes on and off, if they need a certain protein or not. The expression of genes is controlled by operons. Operons are a section of DNA that contain genes with related functions. The operator is the section of DNA in the beginning of an operon. It is where the active repressor can attach. The active repressor is a protein that prevents transcription of messenger RNA. This is the active repressor. The regulatory gene is located elsewhere in the bacteria DNA and it codes for the active repressor protein. The repressor protein only works with a co-repressor. That is a small molecule that binds to the repressor and activate it. So this is a repressible operon. Some repressor proteins are active by themselves. In this case, they don't need a co-repressor to bind to them and activate them. Instead, an, indu an inducer binds to them and inactivates the repressor. This is an inducible operator, or operon. For the lac operon, the inducer is allolactose. It is an isomer of lactose, which is um, formed from lactose. When lactose or allolactose is absent, the repressor is active and the genes are turned off. When lactose is present, allolactose binds to the repressor causing it to change shape and fall off of the gene. This allows the gene to be transcribed or expressed. Co-repressors and inducers are negative regulators. E. coli prefer glucose to lactose. Only when glucose is unavailable, the lac operon is turned on. They sense the quantity of glucose because a small molecule, cyclic AMP or C-AMP, builds up when glucose is low. C-AMP binds to the regulatory protein, C-A-P, catabolite activator protein, which is an activator, and activates it. It attaches to DNA, and this causes the RNA polymerase to start transcription. This is an example of positive regulation. When glucose is high, C-AMP is low, which stops transcription. The combination of positive and negative regulation controls gene expression in prokaryotes. The expression of genes in eukaryotes is more complex than prokaryotes. Eukaryotic cells are bigger, about 10 times more genes. Eukaryotic cells are specialized, and eukaryotic cells have a lot of junk DNA, which is the non-coding areas. Also, they have promoters, stop codons, and other areas that do not directly code for a protein. The eukaryote chromosomes are complex. They are wrapped around histones. Prokaryotes don't have histones. Although all of your cells contain your entire genome, only about 20% of the genes are utilized. Differential gene expression is when different types of cells in your body express different sets of genes. In addition, less than 2% of your DNA codes for proteins. Some of it codes for various RNAs. Most isn't transcribed at all. During the process of gene expression, genes can be turned on and off before, during, and after transcription and translation. If we start with chromatone structure, the way DNA is wrapped around histones affects if it can be transcribed or not. If the gene's promoter is too close to a histone, the inner lining of the nuclear or the inner lining of the nuclear membrane or the chromosome scaffold, groups of proteins the scaffold is groups of proteins that the chromosome is attached to. It can't be transcribed. Heterochromatin is condensed DNA in interphase. So, in other words, it's areas of chromatin that are condensed. 
and the areas that are heterochromatin also cannot be transcribed. Another way that cells regulate gene expression is histone acetylation. An acetyl group, which is COCH3, attaches to lysines, which are amino acids, in the histone tails. This causes the histone to bond less tightly to the DNA, so transcription enzymes enter more easily and transcription increases. DNA methylation has the opposite effect. Methyl group CH3 attached to the bases in DNA, usually to the cytosine bases. This inactivates the gene. For example, an inactive X in mammals called a bar body is highly methylated. One X in each cell becomes inactivated during embryonic development. In the ovaries, both X's are active. So half of a female cell have one X and the other half has the other X. All cells from there have the same bar body. This can cause tortoise shell in cats, which are different patches of color, and women have patches with sweat glands and patches without. Once a gene is methylated, it is passed on to the daughter strands. Therefore, it can be passed on to the offspring. This accounts for genomic imprinting, where one allele from one parent is methylated, therefore not expressed. This is also an example of epigenic inheritance, where a change in the gene, but not the sequence, is passed down. Regulating transcription initiation is another way gene expression can be regulated. Recall that transcription begins with transcription factors and RNA polymerase. Specific transcription factors are unique to certain genes. Before the promoter, there are areas of the DNA called proximal and distal control elements. The distal control elements are called enhancers. This, these are activators and repressors bind to the enhancers, therefore controlling it. The D, first the activators attach to the enhancer, then the DNA bends. Then the enhancers bind to the mediator proteins, which bind to transcription factors. Transcription factors bind to the promoter. Mediators contact the transcription factors. RNA polymerase comes in. So the mediators and the transcription factors and the RNA polymerase make up the transcription initiation complex. Specific transcription factors that act as repressors can bind directly to the distal control elements, which are the enhancers, and block the activators. This will prevent transcription. In addition, some activators attract proteins that cause histone acetylation, starting transcription, and some repressors attract proteins that deacetylate histones, stopping transcription. There are common nucleotide sequence in most control elements. Each enhancer is made of about 10 control elements. The combination of the control elements is more important than the presence of a specific control element. Once the messenger RNA is transcribed, alternative RNA splicing can be used to shift the areas considered introns and exons, creating different combinations of code from one gene. In addition, how long a messenger RNA lasts influences the amount of protein produced. The 5 end cap is removed, allowing the messenger RNA to be digested. Translation can be prevented by regulatory proteins that bind to the 5 end, preventing ribosome attachment. Sometimes messenger RNA does not have a long enough poly A tail to begin translation. An enzyme adds more adenines to the tail, starting translation. Sometimes the activation or inactivation of a protein in the translation initiation complex can control translation. The way a gene can be controlled is in the processing of the poly... Another way that the um, gene can be controlled is in the processing of the polypeptide. Proteins can be activated and inactivated in many ways. Often a protein needs to be physically or chemically activated before it will function. When the protein is broken down, it also impacts how long it will function when the protein is broken down also impacts how long it will function. Ubiquitin is a small protein that attaches to the initial protein. This causes proteasomes, which are giant proteins, to break down the protein. 
There's recent evidence that a lot of the junk DNA is actually coding for types of RNA that doesn't code for proteins. These RNAs may play an important role in gene expression. MicroRNA are short pieces of RNA that fold over like a hairpin. They are trimmed down to a short single piece and merge with a protein. This complex then bonds to the messenger RNA and breaks it down or blocks translation. Small interfering RNA form from longer hairpin structures which produce more than one SI RNA and they work like microRNA. Small RNAs may also be responsible for the production of heterochromatin, which is the condensed DNA in interphase in the centrum that's found in the centromeres. Cell differentiation is when the cells of an embryo become specialized. As the embryo grows, specialized cells are arranged to give the organisms its shape. This is called morphogenesis. There are materials in the original unfertilized egg that program gene expression as the cell divides and differentiates. The cytoplasm of the unfertilized egg contains RNA and proteins that are not distributed evenly. These substances are called cytoplasmic determinants. As mitosis divides the fertilized egg, these determinants are unevenly distributed in the new cells, affecting gene expression and um, differently in each cell. As the embryo grows, the cells begin to receive signals from surrounding cells. Cell surface molecules touching other cells and growth factors secreted by neighboring cells cause induction. This signals a cell to begin to differentiate. Determination is the event that leads to differentiation. Cells produce tissue-specific proteins that determine its shape and function. Master regulatory genes, when transcribed and translated, commit the cell to becoming a certain type. Master regulatory genes often code for transcription factors that cause the transcription of specific genes. Eventually, tissues and organs wind up where they are supposed to be. This is accomplished by pattern formation. There are molecular clues that control pattern formation called positional information. Again, cytoplasmic determinants and inductive signals control this. Homeotic genes determine what body parts develop from each part of the embryo. Researchers studying homeotic genes in fruit flies found that every homeotic gene had a common sequence of 180 nucleotides. Similar sequences have been found in almost every eukaryotic organism. These nucleotide sequences are called homeoboxes. Each is translated into a segment 60 amino acids long. This polypeptide binds to specific sequences of DNA, turning genes on and off during development. Fruit flies were the organisms used for much of the studies on embryotic development. Insects are arthropods, which means they have segmented bodies. The cytoplasmic determinants in the original egg are coded for by the mother's DNA. These are called maternal effect genes. If the maternal effect gene is mutant in the mother, the offspring will be mutant regardless of the genotype. That is because the messenger RNA or protein from the maternal effect gene is in the cytoplasm of the unfertilized egg making it defective. Therefore, all the cells that result from it are also defective. These genes control the orientation of the egg, embryo, and therefore the resulting fly, so they are also called egg polarity genes. Some determine the head and the tail, the head is the anterior end, the tail is the posterior end, and some determine the back and the belly. The back is the dorsal side, the belly is the ventral side. Mutation in these genes are lethal, the embryo cannot develop. An example is the bicoid gene. It determines the anterior body plan. A mutant bicoid gene results in a fly with two tails and no head. The bicoid gene produces messenger RNA that are concentrated in one side of the egg. That side determines the head. After the egg is fertilized, the messenger RNA is translated into proteins. Concentration gradients in eggs play an important role in embryonic development. The genes that regulate cell division in somatic cells can have mutations which, which can cause cancer. These mutations can be spontaneous or caused by mutagens or caused by viruses. Oncogenes are cancer-causing genes. They can be carried by retroviruses. Proto-oncogenes code for normal cell division proteins. They can become oncogenes if mutated. If this change increases the proto oncogene protein production of the activity of the proteins, cancer will result. 
However, there are also genes that inhibit cell division. They are called tumor suppressor genes. They code for proteins that prevent uncontrolled cell division. The proteins produced by proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes are part of the cell signaling pathway that results in proteins that stimulate cell division. Increases in the proto-oncogene and tumor suppressor proteins can result in these pathways making too much cell division stimulating protein. Cancer results from the accumulation of mutations, which is why the chance of cancer increases with age. About six mutations must occur for a cell to become cancerous. These mutations are a combination of the activation of oncogenes and the suppression of tumor suppressor genes. The inheritance of oncogenes or mutated tumor suppressor genes make an individual one step closer to accumulating mutations that lead to cancer. This is one way a person can inherit a predisposition to cancer.